Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. In today's video I'm going to be talking about sliding doors. Uh, we'll go through all the different components we're going to need for them. Uh, I'll actually show you two different working examples. One way will just be a normal sliding door and the second one where it's going to be a custom sealable sliding door. Uh, as I said I'll go through the components, go through the logic, tell you how to get it all wired up. Uh, and in different ways how you could build it into your own creation. And then hopefully by the end of the tutorial, uh, you should have a working knowledge of how to go ahead and actually build your own in your own creation. So with that all said, we'll go ahead and get started. So just before we go ahead and actually start building the, um, the custom door and the normal sliding door, I'll quickly just show you ahead, I've built up the example already, and I'll just show you exactly what they do. Um, so you know if you want to watch the tutorial or not, um, but pretty much I've got this linked up to both the doors, once I press the button, you can see here it slides open. You're able then to get in or out of your custom area, uh, whether it be a helicopter or a boat or whatever it is. And then you can go ahead and actually just close it. And you can see both the doors have been closed and also the one on the right here has now gone ahead and sealed. So with that all set, uh, let's go and build it. So just in front of us, you can see that I've actually just built a base out. Along with that, I have two actual frames of doors already built up. Now you can probably imagine that this would be your own creation wherever you want the sliding door to be. So first off we'll start by building the normal sliding door just to the left. Once we've done that and we've got that working we can then go and actually do exactly the same thing to the custom door just adding one or two components extra just to make sure that it's completely sealed when it is closed. So with that done we'll start adding the components that we need. First off, we actually need to build our actual door components itself. Now you can see we've got the frame already. The easiest and quickest way to be doing this is to actually just select, you can use pivots, you can use um, the bases, you can do anything that creates a separate entity. So for example, if I go ahead and place a pivot down here, you can see now that it's created a separate entity and that's what you want. So once you've done that, you can actually just go ahead and actually just connect this to where you want your door to be. And then you, afterwards, you'll just go ahead and delete it as you can see I've done that. Now you can go ahead and you can see it's a different entity by making sure everything else is gray around it. You can build it up as you want. Um, you can add your own components to it, any accessories you want. So for answer, I can go ahead and put a handle there. I can put uh, windows in here. It's really up to you at the end of the day um, of what you want to add to this. So for this tutorial, as you can see, I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple of windows just across there. And then we can also use a, we can either use a handle or a small ladder, uh, whatever you want to make it look nice at the end of the day, it's up to you. Um, but that's pretty much the basics. Make sure you just have a door where you want uh, that's going to be sliding in and out. Uh, along with that is add any accessories you want and just make sure it's a different component or different entity to the rest of the actual build itself. Now once we've done that we obviously need to add our rails. Now the rails itself obviously being a sliding door it has to come out and then has to go along. So we need to add rails for that system. Now you can build this rail system wherever you want in your creation. You can build it right next to the door. You can build it under your creation, above your creation, to the side of your creation. You can build it far away. It's up to you. Obviously, being cl the closest to the creation, it's going to be more supportive. So, for example, for this tutorial, I'm just going to place it over here. I'm also going to be doing positive to go out. That way, I, I know that when as soon as I give a positive signal, it's going to be opening the door. And whenever it's a negative signal, it's going to be closing the door. So, we obviously need something to make it go out. So we've done that block, which is going to send it out. And then we've done another block at the bottom, which is a compact base, which is going to bring it along this track. Now we'll get to the logic and how to control that just now on the video. But first off, we'll get everything connected. So as you can see here, we want this to run along the door frame. Uh, so we need to actually just add the rails itself. So I want it to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, plus seven done seven and then we only want it to go out one so we can just add one actual extension piece just over here fantastic now once we've done that we obviously need to go ahead and actually connect this to the door because at the moment as you can see it's actually a different entity this piece which is the final piece is a different entity to the door itself so we'll go ahead and we'll just pretty much go ahead and connect it to the door merge it together once we've merged it together you can see now it's one entity so pretty much what's happening is that this piece is going to go out this piece is going to move along as i said i'll get to the logic just now 
But what we can do now is we can actually go ahead and disconnect it. So this actual block piece component, as long as it's the same entity, can actually be placed anywhere in your build, as I said earlier on. So once we've done that, we now actually need to go ahead and sort out the logic for this build. Now, first things first is you're going to need a button to open the door. So for the purpose of the story, I'm going to use a toggle button. Once that toggle button goes, you then obviously need to send signals to those two track pieces. Now, the only thing is that you want, if you go ahead and send signals directly to both tracks, they're going to operate at the same time. You don't want it to operate at the same time. You want it to be running at different times. So first off, it's going to bring it out. Once it's brought it out, it's then going to bring it back. And the same goes when you bring it, when you're closing the doors, you want it to first come along the track and then go in before before it's you know in its in its process so in order to do that what we're going to do is we're going to be using our capacitators now you pretty much just go ahead and use two and then as i said earlier on you then obviously need to go ahead and control the door itself now to control the door itself it takes uh the track rails take a minus one to move negatively it takes a plus one to move uh positively and then a zero to not move at all so for example we can go ahead and just place down two number blocks go ahead rename those to one and minus one as we said earlier we orientated it the actual rails themselves so a positive would be to open and negative negative would be to close so we can go ahead and take our one that's going to be to open and we have two of these uh, switch boxes because we also have two different sliders themselves and we're going to be running them on different times hence the capacitators we then have our negative which is going to be closing which is off and then lastly, obviously, you can go ahead and connect your capacitors up to the switch boxes and then the switch boxes themselves over to the actual rails themselves. And then lastly, you have the actual button, which is going to be controlling the system completely. Once we have that all connected, we then need to actually go ahead and program this. So you can see we've already programmed the numbers to open and close. So if we were going to go ahead and press this button now. Both of these would open at the same time and both of them would close at the same time. So we don't want that to happen. So the first thing we want is obviously to get it to extend out before we get it to move along. So to get it to extend out, which is this block here, we want this to activate straight away. So charge time zero. So it's not taking any time to charge it. Discharge time, we can get that to say one second for now. You'll have to play around with these variables depending on how big your door is and what speed you use for your track bases. But for the purpose of the I'm going to keep it on zero to one, which means it's going to charge for zero seconds and it's going to discharge for one second. Now, the discharge per, for the purpose of this tutorial is useful because when you're closing the door, it's going to take one second before it actually starts to close again. When we go to our second piece, which is actually going to bring it along its track base. So once it's brought it out, this is the piece which is going to bring it along. So now this, you want it to actually wait one second. So you're going to get it to wait until the doors brought out. And then you can see this charging is going straight away. Now, because we've discharged it at zero, when we're closing the door, it's going to immediately close it. Then it's going to send a signal. Obviously, then we're going to go to this block and then it's going to close it properly. So once we've got that all hooked up, the last thing, obviously, because we're here in advanced mode, we need to go ahead and add a battery to the system. So I'm just going to go ahead and place a simple battery just down here at the end of the build and connect the electricity up. Make sure we've got our two different components and then obviously our button. And you can go ahead and actually spawn this in now. Now, because we had our off switch as a negative and we had the component slide up, it's now closed. The door's completely closed. If you were to go ahead and actually press this button now, you can see it's now pushed it out and it's brought it along its track. Now, that's because of the capacitors. It's waited to bring it across, but it's instantly brought it out. And same goes when we close it. You can see it's going to bring it across and now it's waiting until one second and then it brings it in. Now, as you can see here, there is a slight little gap and that comes in where you can actually start adding different track pieces. So, for example, we could have added another compact base here um, and then that would have been more supportive. It all depends on the weight of your door um, and then that pretty much will help you build up a better structure. But you get the principles as you can make it close quicker or slower by using the different speed settings and obviously the capacitor settings, settings here. But that's the basics. And you can go ahead and hide this component block wherever you want and you build. Just make sure it's the same entity as your door itself. So with that said now, we'll actually go ahead and build a custom sliding door where we can seal, excuse me. So first things first is we can actually use the same logic that we use for this door. We need to go ahead and actually build our door entity itself, obviously being 
a different entity to the actual creation or base that we've done. So once again, to do that, you can go ahead and use any of the pivots. I'm going to use this one, place that down there, and then you can see now we can start building our door itself. Now for custom doors, you obviously need to use the special components. However, I'm just going to fill out the door itself by using normal square blocks. We can delete that extra block we don't need anymore. And then we can go ahead now, go to our inventory, select our door frame edge and just make sure we're placing this in the right place all the arrows in the same place all facing out and then lastly we just need to go ahead and add actual corner pieces to this now obviously you can go ahead and decorate this to however you want uh, but for the purposes of Tori I'm just going to keep it stock standard and basic just to show you the actual principles of setting this up now. So once we have that all done, our actual door itself is complete. You can see it's a different entity in comparison to everything else. We're going to do exactly the same thing as we did for our other door. We're going to go ahead and actually just create our custom bases, positive going that way, positive going that way, and then we're just gonna add our actual, so you can see here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so we'll go seven of blocks across, one block out, fantastic, that's all done, last thing we need to do is just make sure it's the same entity, this is the same entity as the door itself, go ahead, connect that all up, go to our merge tool, merge it together, then we can go ahead and delete that, so it's actually not connected at all, once we have that done, we can go ahead and just connect the logic up, uh, electricity as always, connected here, we can go ahead, that goes over there, that one goes over there, and then we should be able to go ahead and spawn this in. As you can see now, the door is completely closed. If we press the button, it's going to go ahead and open. Now that is sagging a little bit, and as I said earlier, you can go ahead and add more rails, and that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now, just for the purpose of the tutorial to show you how you can get it a little bit stronger. Um, so what we can do now is you can just add exactly what we've done here we're just going to replicate it on either side just to make it stronger so you can see we've gone out seven so we'll go out seven again we'll go out one and then what you want to do is you actually want to go ahead and make sure it's the same block so you can see now it's a different entity these are all different entities you want them to be the same so you can go ahead and just build some blocks up make it the same entity delete them again and then same goes for the bottom build some blocks up make it the same entity, delete those blocks, and now you can see actually that's one whole entity, so it's going to be much more supportive in comparison to how it was before. So I'm just going to go ahead quickly now and just quickly link this up just to show you the difference in by adding extra actual rails. Now you don't have to place them the same way as I place them, you can place them anywhere in your build, um, but I just wanted to show you the difference. As you can see now there's not much sag at all, and as soon as you open the door, you can see the sag is pretty much gone away. However, the only downside to adding more is obviously you're now taking up more space within your hull or within your helicopter itself. Now, you're probably wondering, well, first off, I've gone ahead and placed these blocks the wrong way around, so we need to go ahead and just alter that to start with. Uh, the next thing that is obviously quite important is that you're probably wondering, well, hey, this is not sealed, or well, we need to go ahead and get it sealed. So I'm just going to go ahead and just fix these blocks themselves because they weren't done the right way around. So we can go ahead and place the corner edge. Fantastic. Done. Done. And then we'll do the last one. So as I said, we're probably wondering, well, hey, this is not sealed. Well, what we can go ahead and do now is we can actually go ahead and just delete two blocks up here and we can use the actual frame controller. Now the frame controller pretty much says, well, when you send me a signal, I'm going to go ahead and lock this door. Uh, so what we can do is this also sends an, an out signal. So it says, hey, the door's actually locked and it sends an on signal. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just use a life block just over here, uh, actually I'm going to put it there, and that's going to tell us, so when this is now locked, it's going to turn that light switch on, and it's say, hey, the door's locked, you're good to go, you can flood the compartment, you can do whatever you want. So I'm going to just paint it uh, green right now, just for the purpose of this tutorial, so when that's green, we know it's locked. Now, to actually control that lock frame, 
what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our on-off switch. So when this is not turned on, we want our door to be locked because obviously that's closed. Now, if we go to go ahead and actually just connect it up directly, that means that when this door, when this is pressed on, it's going to lock the door. And we don't want that. We want the opposite to happen. And as always, what we're going to be doing is just using a not logic block. Go ahead and connect that. So when that's not switched, it's going to go ahead and actually turn the lock on. And that lock, when it's locked on, it's going to go ahead and light that component up. Make sure you got all electric working. Go ahead and spawn the creation in. As you can see now, the door is locked and completely sealed. No water or fluid will be able to get through that. And you can see the lights telling us now, as soon as we press the button, it goes ahead, unlocks it and opens the actual whole door itself. And that's, that's pretty much about it. It's pretty basic, pretty simple. As I said, you can customize this to your heart's content, add as many components or as little components as you want move these actual components as wherever you want in your own creation. Just remember the further you go away from this, the weaker the actual doors are going to be uh, and the more actual component blocks you're going to need to get it to run it completely smoothly. You can go ahead and play around with the timings. So if it's too slow or too fast, you can go ahead and change the timings if you want. It's really up to you. But with that all said, I'm going to go ahead and end the video right there. Uh, I think that's a basic description of everything. As always, guys, I hope you've liked it and enjoyed it and found it somewhat informative, as always. Uh, don't forget to check out my streams. I'm planning on doing every weekend now two streams, one on a Saturday, one on Sunday. I will obviously let all my YouTube subscribers know about that uh, in advance. Don't worry about it. I think this Saturday we will be doing the survival stream with one of the other YouTube streamers. And that's pretty much about it. Uh, as always, guys, uh, we'll see you in the next one.